Greetings ladies and managers and welcome to this latest narration of the web series The Nature of Predators. If you are new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 169 Memory Transcription Subject, Captain Sovereign, United Nations Fleet Command Date, Standardized Human Time, March 24th, 2137 I desperately shoved my paw over the bullet hole in Carlos's helmet, trying to seal the gap that exposed him to vacuum. Viscous blood adhered to my suit, slathering over my smooth exterior. How was I supposed to give the human medical attention when removing his mask would freeze him and strip him of all oxygen? Samantha knelt by my side, her body language distraught. I could see her checking her the wrist readout of the male predator's vitals, while I desperately shook his unmoving shoulder. Despite my best efforts at revival, his form was limp against my touch. Whatever happens to me, I will be enduring as a tree and as fierce as a bear. Our past doesn't define us, Carlos had told me, while describing the green markings on his arm. When all of this first began, I couldn't have imagined how much grief I feel, huddling over a predator's corpse. I could feel the rover trundling along towards the base, autopilot still in gear, even as Sam had crawled away from the driver's seat. Carlos needed to get back up and man the turret. It was a single bullet, an apex hunter. The most powerful creature on untamed earth shouldn't be downed by one lump of metal. Terrence was supposed to be enduring as a tree and as fierce as a bear. I punched his chest through the thick spacesuit, frustrated that it wasn't moving. Oh, wake up! I screamed. Sam winced for my volume alone as the comm link was still open. There's going to be a humanitarian mission after this war. The chance to do good in the galaxy, like you loved doing on Earth. You can't just fucking quit. Carlos's form didn't budge or react an inch, offering no signs of life. I could see the female guard shaking her head and trying to collect herself. Samantha wasn't doing anything to help patch our friend up, though I could hear her sniffling. How could you give up on him like an ox or... Not doing a single thing to mend a wounded friend. These were predators with empathy. Not callous monsters like the greys and the cautions who left their weaklings behind. And you are not going to refer to me as a predator again. I can hear his stern voice chastising me with impatience for my antics towards the oxal. What Carlos told me a little while ago served as a reminder of how he was my first friend. The one who sought to understand my motives. In spite of what I've done, I listened to your spiel on torturing an innocent human and tried to empathize with you. Every word the human had said to me was rushing back, burying me with an emotional avalanche. I remember the time I'd saved his life on the cattle ship, that first realized that I cared for my guards, an alarming thought back then. I reminisced when he visited me in my prison cell in Skalka and had been the only one who could restrain his anger enough to speak to me. When I was at my lowest, thinking Gojids were monsters after the omnivore revelations, it had been Carlos who asked other humans not to bring that up to me. He'd known how I felt about being a meat-eater, and how my entire life had collapsed in on myself. There's a tillfish right there. They're going to give, give you a hug, I blubbered, with tears streaming down my face. The guard's fear of the insectoids had been on display on several occasions, to my prior amusement. You've got to move! It's very creepy, right? I turned Carlos's helmet from side to side, like I was rolling a ball back and forth on the carpet. There was no resistance. The stupid human wasn't answering. How hard was it to give any form of response when he was freaking me out like this? The predator had known the risks, but I couldn't accept that he was just gone. Snot bubbled in my nose as I imagined what he would say about catching a bullet in the wrong place. He'd always been too calm about potential dangers, while well, I'd been the panicky one in our sticky predicaments. We always hope for the best, but no combat situation is a guarantee. Just breathe, buddy, the guard had said on the submarine when we were trying to last-ditch strategy to evade a torpedo. I won't breathe. I won't listen to you, I screeched as I sank to my knees in despair. If I were being honest with myself, I realized the truth the second I saw his wound. <laughs> Carlos. Samantha's hand sank deep into my arm, and the human yanked me to my feet with force. I shrieked, swinging my claws towards her in a clumsy gesture. 
Despite the bulky suit, the predator's reflexes made it easy for her to duck. Her chest was shaking, betraying her own emotions, but I could feel her binocular eyes leveling me with a pointed stare. She prevented me from returning to my attempts to resuscitate Carlos and stood between me and the fallen soldier. Listen! Carlos is dead, Sovlan. He's gone! Her growling voice had taken on a form of commanding yell. I checked these vitals. There's no heartbeat or brain activity. There's nothing. Back all that we can do. We need to keep moving. I stumbled back in denial. No, no, you're wrong. I'm not leaving. Samantha forcefully jostled my shoulders and lowered her voice to a sympathetic growl. Carlos was killed instantly. If someone doesn't get back on that gun, so we can defend ourselves moving forward. He died for nothing. Everyone who's died in this war died for nothing if we fail here. Plus, we need to make the fuckers who shot him pay. I'd get on the gun myself, but I'm the only one who knows how to run the vehicle's OS. The gun. Yeah. Nobody's sh sh shooting it. Snap out of it. Now watch our navigations, but keep back here to help you reload, but quicker than you doing it yourself. You make some caution's head explodes, and we take that fecking base for Carlos and for humanity. You just need to stand there, head low, pull the trigger, bullet spray. Nice and simple. Can you handle that? Y yes, I... I miss him already, Sam. I... I... I always hated losing a soldier. The Predator's shoulders slumped. I miss him too. He was more than just a soldier. He was my friend. Our moral compass. When we get his body back to our ship, I'll see that he gets the burial and the honors he deserves. I imitated the human nod in a daze and tried to move through the grief suffocating me. None of what just happened felt real. It was all so sudden. How Carlos's life was snapped out of existence. Bitterness hardened within my heart as I thought about the cautions in the base who'd shot my friend. I was going to make them pay with their own lives, returning the favor. There was plenty of anger to grant me courage, despite how I'd seen the human snipe down from behind the turret. I moved his gunner's tether to my suit. It should have been me gunned down in the first place, bringing it full circle with how I'd wished to sacrifice myself for my crimes. I used to think that I don't deserve happiness, but... It's not about that anymore. Carlos doesn't have the checkered past that I do. It's a basic equation that I deserve to bite the dust more than him. My head poked out through the hatch, and my claws didn't feel like my own as they hooked around the firing mechanism. Caution defenders had taken up positions with machine guns along the balconies of their installation, which looked like a glorified tower wedged between expensive weapons. Bullets assailed our rover. Though their flight and collision with our armor was inaudible, the blurs of motion blinked across my vision. I could see one make a close shave of my position, while dust ahead of us was churned up by the vaulted missile. Another explosive appeared to be on target for our position, but was snapped off through the vehicle's automated interceptors. It was chaos on the lunar surface. Hundreds of rovers rolled over the bumpy terrain to our destination, just as I knew was happening to the other outposts. There were a few hundred cautions and sites to defend the complexes, but they would be overrun if we reached them with these numbers. We needed to keep our vehicle intact for a few more minutes to reach our target. I was thirsting for blood in a predatory fashion, embroiled in pain from the loss of Carlos. The fresh wounds drove me to sort out the kinks in the technology quickly. The gun was able to pump out multiple rounds a minute, and the bullets could clear the miles-long gap without wavering. I set to gouging holes in the balcony, hoping to obliterate those bastards with lead. When it's time to hop out, we'll join up the rovers onto our left and right, Sam explained over the comlink. Your rifle is still strapped to your right. While I'd shifted my gun out of my way to operate the turret, I could feel it tucked against my side. Yes, I have a visual on the base. I'll know when we're there. It'll be obvious because the rover will stop. Assuming the squids don't have the good sense to duck and cover inside, we can shoot the outdoor campers from the rover, but I imagine they're retreating. Through my heads-up magnification, I could see Kalshians making a break for the entrances. Scowling with unadulterated rage, I swiveled the turret towards their destination to choke it with fire. Bullets nailed several soldiers back, liberating them from the violet blood just as they'd spilled Carlos's crimson life force. The smarter ones were able to crawl inside using corpses as cover, 
but a few defenders were trapped outside as our tanks rolled closer. They were being peppered by hundreds of turrets, with the balcony wall looking more like paper ribbons. Unable to find an easily available target, I pumped extra lead into the corpses for good measure. If any of those arseholes were playing dead, they weren't going to be playing much longer. Minutes was by in an adrenaline-fueled blur as the rover rolled towards its destination. I eviscerated a caution that stood for the briefest second before they could fire a shot at me or one of my allies. Samantha, meanwhile, was keeping an eye out for any mines through her periscope. She pointed out one metal circle hidden deceptively on the ground for my HUD, which I then set off prematurely. It seemed that the enemy's missile supply was depleted, but running into a barrier of landmines could upturn a rover and maim its inhabitants. I was grateful the Predator's eyes were keen, because my focus was single-mindedly a revenge. I can't wait to get into solid ground and execute these fuckers up close and personal. How many humans, how many innocent people have to die before their bloodlust is snaked? Anyone still serving the Caution army is a true predator and deserves to suffer for everything that they've taken from me. Once we were within half a kilometer, the Terran snipers were able to set up shop. Their work was quiet and efficient, detectable only through the appearance of tiny holes in the windows. Anyone visible, including the Colchians with a self-destruct key, was picked off with the masterfulness of a hunter focusing on their prey. Terrans, with perfect accuracy, kept watch on the door, blowing one foe's head off as soon as he set foot into the command center. No one was going to be retrieving those arming authorizations. Now our enemies were going to face real justice. The damned primates better not take prisoners this time. Beyond my steaming anger, we couldn't afford to tote more bodies back to our ships. I kept my head low as the rover slowed, parking itself by the decimated complex. Hey Sam, uh, uh, something just occurred to me. Hmm? The human offered. What's to stop the Colchians from blowing the planetary defenses off the map with us inside? The same reason humanity sent us here, instead of picking them off from orbit. Too dangerous to take a direct flight at the lasers. It would cost a fat ton of ships. You gotta have precision bombing to ensure to take out something this small. But I imagine when they realize it's turned against them, they'll try. They weren't expecting us to thwart their self-destruct orders. So we could still blow up with us inside. Only a small number of humans are sticking around to operate the controls. After we clear the place, we're going to get back to the rover and catch the drone shuttle back to our ship at the evac point under friendly controlled skies. Damned if I'm going to leave Carlos to uh, decay at the arse end of this moon. He should be brought home, even if he wasn't tied with his family. There's m many people who grieve his passing and celebrate his life. A life that should have been longer, but that's a tired story I could say about my dead as a doornail husband too. Fucking hell. Now's not the time to get all teary-eyed. Get out of the vehicle, now. I ducked back through the rover's hatch and bounced out after Sam towards the exit. The human fell into a pack with the other soldiers before we ascended the balcony stairs in a purposeful formation. Caution bodies littered the upper deck, with a handful having been picked off backed on the ground. The rover's onslaught had shredded any living enemies, especially as UN vehicles armed with grenades got close. As always, the Predator's killing technology from their pre-FTL days exceeded anything seen in the galaxy. The extremity of the walls they fought amongst themselves, brutal and bloody, showed in their advancement of their technology. With how quickly the Yodel were catching up with our shackles, it raised the question of whether Lian had a similar history. What will Onzo and Tyler say, assuming we make it back? But with Carlos in a body bag, it's like every thought brings me back to the fact that he's gone forever. No more advice, shared meals, or adventures together. Irrevocably gone. I knew I needed to keep my composure, unless I wanted to bear responsibility for Sam garnering the same fate. The Gaulshan command center was kept locked down by snipers, but we needed to flush out any stragglers taking refuge inside the obfuscating walls. As much as I longed to be the one to end this miserable bastard's lives, the humans were taking charge. A soldier clicked open a door, lobbing a grenade with ease through the lax gravity. Our helmet HUD switched over to night vision, which allowed us to see in the darkened kitchen. As Colshin was trying to hide behind a trash can, but I fired a shot into his leg. While he jerked to the ground, I stomped on him and placed a bullet straight through his helmet from point-blank range. The Terrans were shooting on sight as well, 
and ready poking gun barrels into closets and adjacent hallways. There wasn't time for any unwanted surrenders, to my relief. With how willing the Colchians were to fight dirty and utilize the UN's morality against them, it was impossible to trust any attempts to turn themselves in. I fell back in at Samantha's side as she kept an eye for any ambushes from behind. We followed a snaking corridor into the mess hall, where a few petrified hostiles shot at us from under tables. One bullet connected with the Terrence leg, but thankfully, the foe's low positioning made it difficult for them to fire on vital areas in close combat. I ducked enough to pump several bullets in quick succession, as the predators dispatched the other enemies with breathtaking ease. In ground combat, you guys are far outshined them, just like you showed you're not the same bracket during the shipboardings, I remarked. Samantha finished patching the bullet hole in her wounded suit's leg, securing her air supply. We're trained properly and keep our wits. Federation fear and caution complacency don't make for a good standing army. That's if they weren't outnumbered and blown the feck out by rovers. I am glad that they were our class, because it means that we can get to the control of planetary defenses. That'll turn the tide of battle and distract the Shadow Fleet. I hope, uh, Carlos's sacrifice has to mean something. Let's actually get those lasers in our possession. Then we'll think about winning this shit show. Just keep your head on a swivel. We don't need any traps or tricks catching us off guard. I don't need my head on a swivel. I don't have binocular vision. <laughs> we still need to look behind you, Baldy. I chuckled before quieting myself with guilt. What? Sam huffed. Carlos wouldn't expect me to stop taking swipes at you for anyone's funeral. The UN soldiers finished sweeping the hall before progressing down the final stretch to the command center. The complex was hardly spacious for its occupants, with few luxuries present. The premises were reserved for packing weapons to fend off raiders and invasions. If that fact allowed us to reach the command center and bring the planetary defenses under our control quicker, then it was a blessing. The Terran who'd taken a bullet in the leg was able to bounce it after that, having gotten a tight patch secured around his perforation. Given that the command center was under lockdown by human snipers, there weren't likely to be many more enemies to clean up. Samantha found a single caution crouching outside a final entry and gunned him down without remorse. The Terrans didn't relax their guard, despite the high likelihood that the vicinity was clear of hostiles. I was grateful that most defenders fell against the rovers, saving me from watching more humans perish at my feet. The senseless losses of our side had incurred throughout this battle was staggering enough, just from the overhead skirmish. I waited as we communicated to our snipers that we were entering the command center so watchful allies wouldn't pick us off for the first sign of movement. There was no time to waste in redirecting planetary defenses for the sake of our fleet. All right, let's go, Samantha barked. I followed the Predator's soldiers into the command center and watched the tech specialists work on switching the defense's directives. Turning my gaze stalwart, I wished that Carlos was here to see our mission reach its successful end. There was still a herd load of enemies running amok above us and we had no update on how our murder had fared in our absence. Nonetheless, I was certain that these seized assets could give the United Nations the chance to put the Shadow Fleet down. Because of our actions on lunar soil, humanity might be able to level the playing field around others' orbit. End of chapter. I would like to thank the T5 peeps, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Bushmaster177, Leslie517, Red Panda 121, Cold War Boomerwaffen, Light Jock, Dragzoon WRE, Lord Azrakal, Severin Cerberus, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.